everyone. My name is Shantana Thuli. Um, I am a, a data slash research scientist. Uh, I, I'm a physicist. Um, so this is what I study. I really like this artist rendering uh, of what's inside a proton. Uh, so as you can see, there's a lot going on, and, and that's, that's what I study. It's a strong nuclear force that holds it together. Um, I'll talk about, uh, uh, I'll give a very beginner level intro to PyTest, uh, but before that, a little bit more about what I do. So uh, this is uh, the Large Hadron Collider. It's at CERN. Uh, I work for the CMS collaboration. Uh, we collide particles. We accelerate them to really high energies, and then we collide them. And what we do is we build these detectors uh, around the collision point where the particles actually come together and smash. Um, and we try to take a picture of what's happening in, in, that, in such an event. So these things are made up of tons and tons of sensors, simple little sensors. So there's actually 75 million electronic sensors just, just in the gray area in the middle over there of the CMS detector. This is a cute 3D printout of the actual detector, which is huge. Um, okay, so this is what an event might look like. Uh, all the colors that you see are, are signals read out by the sensor. So, um, a lot going on again, and we get about 40 million of these per second. So, yeah, massive data, uh, but it's fun to work with them. Okay, moving on uh, to PyTest. So I recently learned how to use PyTest, um, and there, the most important thing I can tell you about it is that it's easy to pick up. So if there's anyone out there who um, hasn't tried it out yet, uh, it's it's actually easy to pick up, which I. You know, <laughs> um, so yeah, a couple. Uh, so there's some documentation there. Um, just a couple of things. Uh, so you can import it pretty easily, just like any other library or tool. And uh, you can always, uh, if you don't have it, you can always get it uh, with pip. Um, and then, so the test functions are gonna have this sort of format. Uh, we're gonna define the function just like any other function. We're just gonna put test underscore in front of it so that it knows that it's, this is a test function. It'll take the same arguments as your function would that you're trying to test. So uh, the basic idea is I wanna, I'm, I'm writing some code. I wanna make sure that it does what I think it does and uh, for that I'm writing this test. So uh, the things that are really, uh, I found really useful are assert and PyTest raises. So I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that in the next couple of slides. Okay, so suppose a really simple example, suppose we write a division function x, divide, or, uh, x is divided by y. Now we might wanna test a couple of things like does it actually do what it's supposed to do? So that we can do that with assert. Uh, so basically assert divide x, y, the output from that is equal to x over y. So ensure that this function output is actually equal to what it's, what it's supposed to output, that sort of stuff. Okay, uh, what about if there are some errors that we expect uh, to be outputted, like if I try to divide by zero, that should give me a zero division error. So uh, for things like that, I want to use I can use with pytest.raises. So then, uh, when 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 uh, I run the test, it's gonna make sure that the test actually raises this this exception, that zero division error. So if it does, then my test passes. If it doesn't, then there's there's some issue. Uh, and similarly, we can test for the type error when. Um, when it's, it's not an integer or, or a float, for instance, because that's what the division is gonna expect. Okay, so again, like really, really basic stuff. Um, so I want to, when, I, when I'm running this test, I wanna test it with values of x and, uh, pairs of x and y, right? So in order to pass that, I do, uh, I can do pytest.mark pi parameterize, and then I'm sending it uh, x, y pairs, and it'll run over those, um, and, and then uh, it'll, it'll do the test. And that has to go right above this test definition, uh, then it knows that it's supposed to use them. Um, cool, okay, so the test can pass, and it can fail, and can do a few other things, which you can learn about yourself. Um, the nice thing about PyTest is that it gives you a lot of information when it does fail. Um, and that's really cool. So for instance here, if I had written my program, my division program, and I said uh, that, okay, when I try to divide by zero, give me infinity instead of raising an error or, or something like that. But in the test I wrote, oh, uh, if it's like, if, if the divisor is zero, just give me, uh, instead of ra raising an error, I'm expecting that it's just gonna put out not a number. So in this case, the test fails. Uh, because it doesn't agree. Um, so we get, and then we have all of this information about where it failed and how it failed and all the various sources of different things. Uh, last thing, very quickly, that I want to touch on is it also, PyTest also has fixtures, which are really cool. So you can define, uh, or yeah, you can define.
define a fixture outside of all the tests, and then you can call it with from your test as many times as you want. It actually uh, uh, gives the generator function and not the data itself, so it's pretty cheap to use.